The season finale with the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Detroit Lions takes place Sunday at noon. It's your play-by-play voice, Paul Allen, joined weekly by Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer. This is X's and O's, presented all season by U.S. Bank. How you doing, Coach? Things all right? Yeah, doing okay, Paul. The uh, the 2020 season, uh, probably the, the appreciation for adapting – and people just having to make things work, it it probably is the highest it's ever been, right? Yeah, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, good communication, a lot of of people uh, following all the protocols and doing the things that they had to do. uh, And, uh, you know, I thought our guys did a nice job. When you write that book, will 2020 get a separate chapter? Yeah, probably. Uh, and and speak, speaking of the 2020 season, not speaking for you, of course, but seriously, have you ever appreciated the fans here, there, or anywhere more than this year? Yeah, it's been uh, very unusual. It took a long time to get used to really going in, into the uh, stadium, being quiet and, um, you know, uh, on the road at home, the whole bit. You know, we have great fans and they, uh, you know, they definitely help us. Uh, in the home field advantage. What um, uh, Blake Lynch, undrafted from Baylor, you know, he had a bunch of tackles in that New Orleans game. But uh, overall, what do, you, what do you think of Blake? I think he's got a chance to be a good player. He's uh, got good size. Um, you know, like most of these young guys, they got to get bigger and stronger. But he's got good speed. He's a smart kid. Um, so he has a chance. You know, I think uh, has a chance to be a good special teams player next year and then maybe move, move into, uh, you know, the lineup a little bit more the following. You know, uh, this this Lynch undrafted from Baylor, I think 2016 through 2018 played offense, had like rushing and receiving touchdowns. 2019, sacks and interceptions. That uh, That's quite the athlete at Baylor in the Big 12. Pretty good. Yeah, and he, uh, he was a defensive back, uh, you know, so he's still learning the position, um, you know, and um, he, he's – I think Eric Wilson has helped him quite a bit trying to learn some of the some of the nuances of playing linebacker. You know, with uh, the way the New Orleans game went and the way the season will end with no playoffs, is is it even possible at this stage to recognize truly how much dynamic young talent you have on this team? I think Paul, that's still that's still a ways away. You know, I think we do have some talented young guys, um, but you know. Uh, they have to be obviously a lot more consistent. Uh, you know, they all have to get bigger and stronger, get in the weight room, get, have an off season, OTAs, um, spring practice. You know, I think they all have to have that. And, uh, you know, without that, it uh, put a lot of these guys behind the eight ball, really. You know, with uh, Justin Jefferson, more receptions than Randy Moss in 98, his rookie year, 37 yards from the most receiving yards in the history of the Minnesota Vikings. I know in a team game, it's an individual accomplishment, but with no preseason and, and a virtual off season with all that, that that's phenomenal. Yeah, he's done a great job, uh, you know, but uh, offensively, I think we've done a great job all year long. You know, we've had a lot of veteran guys and I think it showed throughout most of the season, um, you know, having Justin in there with, with Adam and, uh, uh, you know, most of the time with Kyle and, and the, you know, Kirk, um, and having Cookie, you know, being able to do what he's done, I think all those things have added to uh, to him. But he's he's a, a really really good football player, catches the ball well, um, runs really good routes, and he'll continue to get better and better. How about Riley Reef? I mean, he he himself, in my opinion, is a metaphor for life because you know, take, reportedly takes a pay cut in training camp, uh, assumedly doesn't complain about it, and goes out and has arguably the best season of his career. I mean that that's how you handle tough situations, right? Yeah, and Riley, uh, you know, I love him. He's, he's, uh, he doesn't say a lot, but when he does, he means it. He's, he's extremely tough, extremely physical, wants to battle you every single play. Um, you know, he's just a, just a true football player. After this uh, Lions game, do you get some time off, or is it immediately tear down the 2020, figure out what to do to get better? Yeah, I think uh, what we're going to do is take take a little time away and then, uh, you know, because you, you never want to evaluate all your players on, on you know, a 
past, just a past performance. So take some time, think about the, the season, the things we've, we, we've done well, the things we didn't do well, and then uh, evaluate the players and then, then go from there. Mike Zimmer, X's and O's, KFAN, Minnesota Vikings Radio Network. The, uh, with, with the week of practice up to this Lions game, um, non-playoff season, do, do, does anything change? Does it loosen up a little? I mean, like how, how does this week of practice compare to others? Well, it's, it's pretty similar, you know. Uh, you know, quite honestly, the defensive guys, these, these young guys, they need to continue to practice. And, and go you know we probably could go a little bit lighter with the with the offensive guys but uh you know it's a team game and we all got to go out there and we all got to try to perform and um you know so uh to me this this is the game that I'll remember throughout the course of the off season and uh you know so hopefully we go out there and play play well given the nature of the most recent off season Jeff Gladney nine plays against the Packers played increasingly more the rest of the way uh the Packers game first game of the year uh, overall, uh, what did you think of Jeff? Yeah, I think he's had a good year. Uh, you know, like I said before, we put a lot on his plate, playing really playing two positions for a young guy. I've never had a, a rookie come in and, and be able to do those kind of things and, and get in in a nickel before. Um, so he's, he's done a nice job. Uh, it's, it, the offseason will be important for him as well. Uh, you know, he, he, he had a knee that he, he's been uh, milking a little bit. Uh, I guess is the best way to say it throughout the throughout the course of the season. So he needs to get that rehab the right way, uh, get back and get some strength, and and um, and you know come back ready to go. You know whether uh, it was Xavier Rhodes here when he was atop his game, Leon Hall when you were in Cincinnati, is Cam Dantzler becoming the type of corner where you're getting close to being able to say that guy is yours? That's the end of the story. Well, I think he has that ability. You know, it's still way too early to, to say that. Um, you know, he does have ability and he does have really good cover, cover skills. You know, he's got to stay healthy. He's got to get, he's got to get bigger and stronger in the offseason as well. You know, he's 180 pounds and six, almost 6'2". Six uh, you know, he's got to get some, put some bulk and, and strength on him and then, uh, you know, understand. I, I think the one good thing about all these young guys is they kind of understand what um, – the NFL season is really like it's a lot different than a college season and and even some of our guys who missed the OTAs and um, you know the, the the true training camp kind of kind of things um, I think they got an appreciation for uh, what it really is going to take for them to be uh, good professional football players and and off that I mean I think maybe for fans or really anybody except for like superstar veteran players the, the appreciation for the preseason games? I mean, ha have you ever appreciated preseason games more than you do now? Yeah, and, you know, Paul, we had guys come in here that uh, weren't even here in training camp that end up playing in their first game is, is uh, you know, when they go out there and play against whoever we're playing that week. We've had, you know, these rookies, the first game they get to go out and, uh, you know, play against Aaron Rodgers the first game. So, um, you know, those things are all important in the, in the progression of um, – especially young players, you know, the veteran players, you know, Harrison Smith and those guys and, you know, Riley Reef, as you said, they have an idea of what, what this thing's all about now. But I, I promise you, if they would have had to deal with the same things that these young guys had to, um, that, that, you know, it, it would have took their breath away a little bit as well. And then you get to Ezra Cleveland. I mean, he had never he may, maybe played guard in high school. I don't know, but he never did a Boise State. You know, now all of a sudden we're opposite, what, Grady Jarrett and, and Akeem Hicks and these men that make up the NFL. And I'm sure it didn't grade out perfectly, but think about that from a team concept standpoint. He wants to be tackle. You drafted him as a tackle. But look, I mean, he went in there and gave his best. Yeah, and um, he's another guy that needs to get bigger and stronger. You know, he's, he's, he's still a puppy. Um, you know, all, all these young guys, you know, Jefferson obviously was ready to go. He's, he got the size and speed, but when, when he puts on a little bit of strength, a little bit more strength, he's, he's going to be something really to deal with. But, you know, Ezra has to do that. Uh, you know, all these, all these young guys that uh, come in here, um, you know, it's different. And then, and when you don't have OTAs and preseason and uh, <laughs> all the, you know, training camp really of, of what, what you have to do, it, it's, it's a different deal. Now, um, with uh, with Eric Hendricks, you're you're making a playoff push, and you lose Eric. 
uh, with, with losing him, what what on the defense did did you did you miss during the playoff push? Well, somebody could make some plays. You know, he's he was a big time playmaker. Uh, you know, intercept intercept the ball against Detroit uh, in the end zone. Um, you know, his his leadership ability of getting everybody lined up and making the correct calls and all those all those types of things. Uh, you know, but just his you know he's he just is a football player that goes and makes tackles all day long and you know with him not being there obviously and, and missing bar that obviously helped you know hurt as well and his energy too right specifically in stadiums with no fans where you know you kind of got to get it going on your own yeah and you know Chris Boyd was a big uh, energy guy before he got hurt you know he was a guy that was a good tackler and uh, energetic and uh, he brought a lot of emotion to those to those young defensive backs and so, uh, you know, that was a, that was a loss as well. Um, I saved Alvin for last uh, because I saved the best for last. He, he's phenomenal on and off the field. He's phenomenal. What uh, what do you think of his season? Uh, terrific. Uh, you know, he he fought through playing 80 plays. I think it was 70 plays in one ball game or something like that. Um, you know, uh, his explosiveness. His leadership ability, who I, which I really, really respect the way he, he goes about being a leader and the toughness that he brings to not only that position, but the offense and the, and the team. I think, uh, you know, he's, he's just a tremendous, tremendous football player with a great heart. And, uh, you know, as good as football player, his, his heart might be bigger. And uh, I and we respect you. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, best of luck this offseason, okay? All right, Paul. Thank you.